Hold on to your hats. Our narrator, Nick Carraway, has some hair-raising things to share about life and love in the 1920s. Was it the Roaring Twenties or the Rotten Twenties? You'll have to stick around to find out, old sport. Nick's an honest kind of guy who people tend to confide in, which is why he has lots to tell us about what happened in 1922. Of all the people Nick met that year, the one who made the biggest impression on him was Gatsby. Ah, Gatsby. It all began in the summer. Nick had recently moved from America's Midwest to take a job in New York City. He'd also rented a cottage on Long Island's West Egg, right next door to Gatsby's mansion. Nick's second cousin, Daisy Buchanan, lived across the bay in the more fashionable East Egg, where the old money resides. One evening, Daisy invites Nick over for dinner. Nick receives a warm welcome from Daisy, but her friend, Jordan Baker, is standoffish. Although Jordan does know who Nick's neighbour is, who's Gatsby? Nick went to Yale with Daisy's obnoxious husband, Tom Buchanan. The unhappy state of Tom and Daisy's marriage is showcased during dinner when Tom's mistress calls twice. Poor Daisy is clearly miserable. When he arrives back home, Nick sees his neighbour, Gatsby, standing out on his manicured lawn in the moonlight. Gatsby holds his arms out towards a green light that flashes in the distance. What's he doing? A short time later, Tom introduces Nick to his mistress, Myrtle Wilson. She lives in the Valley of the Ashes, an industrial wasteland that lies halfway between the eggs and New York City. She's married to George Wilson, who owns a garage. George doesn't realise that Tom visits his garage to see Myrtle, not discuss cars. Later that afternoon, they all end up at Tom and Myrtle's love nest in the city. Myrtle invites a few people over and it turns into a party. But the shindig ends abruptly when Tom breaks Myrtle's nose for repeating Daisy's name. What a brute! But that wasn't a proper party. Only Gatsby throws real parties. Soon enough, Nick is formally invited to one. Jordan Baker saves him from social isolation, and they go on a mission to find the mysterious Gatsby. Inside, they find an owl-eyed man in the library, but no Gatsby. At around midnight, Gatsby finally introduces himself to Nick. They chat briefly before Gatsby takes a phone call and then asks to speak to Jordan alone. Is Gatsby trying to steal Nick's date? It turns out that Gatsby had pulled Jordan aside to tell her something amazing. But Nick must make a date with her if he wants to know more. So Nick starts dating Jordan, even though he hasn't officially broken up with his girlfriend back home. One morning, Gatsby drives Nick into the city in his big yellow car. On the way, Gatsby tells Nick his life story. Apparently, he comes from a wealthy Midwest family, is a decorated war hero, was educated at Oxford, and was affected by a very sad thing that happened in his past. It all sounds like a lie, until he pulls out a medal and photo to corroborate it. Gatsby also says that Jordan will fill Nick in on the very sad thing. Ah, so that's what Jordan and Gatsby were discussing at the party. Maybe Gatsby is legit. At lunch, Gatsby introduces Nick to his longtime business partner, Maya Wolfsheim. Bit of a shady character, that one. An awkward moment also occurs when Nick bumps into Tom Buchanan at the restaurant. Gatsby vanishes after Nick introduces him to Tom. What's all that about? Later that afternoon, Jordan gives Nick the scoop. Five years ago, back in Louisville, 
Daisy had a steamy love affair with a young army officer named Jay Gatsby. But then Gatsby went off to war and Daisy married Tom Buchanan. Gatsby has been pining for Daisy ever since. He even bought that crazy mansion to be close to her. He throws big parties in the hope that Daisy will show up to one. But she hasn't. So now it's down to Nick. Gatsby wants Nick to invite Daisy to afternoon tea at his cottage. But Daisy isn't to know that Gatsby will be there. Being a dutiful friend, Nick invites Daisy over a few days later. Gatsby shows up an hour earlier, looking sleep-deprived. When Daisy arrives, Gatsby runs out through the back door and knocks on the front door, as if he's just arrived, fashionably late. Cool moves, old sport. The lovers' reunion is super awkward at first. Daisy hardly knows what to say. But eventually, the atmosphere shifts until Daisy and Gatsby are absolutely absorbed in one another. Gatsby then takes Daisy and Nick next door for a tour of his jaw-dropping house. Goodness knows how he earned the money to buy it in only three years. As the evening draws in, Nick decides to leave them to it. They don't need him anymore. After this, Nick doesn't see Gatsby for a few weeks, so he uses this interval to tell us more about the great Gatsby. Jay Gatsby was born James Gats, the son of poor farmers from the Midwest. But Gatsby had big dreams and reinvented himself at age 17. His career officially began when he introduced himself as Jay Gatsby to the millionaire Dan Cody. Cody became Gatsby's employer and mentor, teaching him how to be a man of substance. Nick visits Gatsby one Sunday afternoon. Tom Buchanan and his posh riding buddies also drop in, as if Gatsby's house is a pub. The way these East Egg Toffs treat Gatsby is quite rude, although Gatsby makes a point of telling Tom, I know your wife. Sure enough, Tom and Daisy show up to Gatsby's next party. Except Daisy doesn't enjoy herself. West Egg just isn't her scene. At the end of the night, Tom announces that he's going to find out who Gatsby really is. Uh Uh-oh. A short time later, Nick, Jordan and Gatsby are invited to the Buchanans for lunch. It's not long before Tom sniffs out the affair. Instead of exploding then and there, he decides they'll all go into the city. So, Tom drives Nick and Jordan in Gatsby's car, while Gatsby drives Daisy in Tom's blue coupé. On the way, Tom stops by Wilson's garage for gas. While George fills Gatsby's car, he tells Tom that he and Myrtle are leaving town for good. Nick sees Myrtle staring down at the car from an upstairs window. Will Tom lose his wife and mistress on the same day? After they reach the Plaza Hotel, Tom confronts Gatsby about his affair with Daisy. Gatsby rises to the challenge, but Tom quickly gains the upper hand. When Daisy loses the nerve to end her marriage, Tom goes for the jugular. He reveals how Gatsby makes his millions from organised crime with Maya Wolfsheim. Gatsby tries to deny it, but Daisy shuts down. She wants to go home. Tom's so sure of his victory that he tells Gatsby to take Daisy home, in his own car this time. When Myrtle Wilson sees Gatsby's big yellow car coming, she runs out onto the road to flag it down. But the car doesn't stop. It hits Myrtle, killing her instantly. By the time Tom pulls up at Wilson's garage, a crowd has gathered. Tom soon realises what's happened. A policeman is recording details about a big yellow car, so Tom acts quickly. He grabs George, sits him down and denies any personal connection to the car. On the drive home, Tom sobs quietly, blaming Gatsby for Myrtle's death. But by the time they reach Tom's house, he's pulled himself together. 
As Nick waits for his taxi, Gatsby emerges from the bushes. Nick tells Gatsby that the woman he hit on the road was killed. Gatsby admits that Daisy was driving, but he'll say he was driving if anyone asks. For now, he's waiting in the garden in case Tom hassles Daisy about the ugly scene at the Plaza Hotel. Nick is suddenly concerned. What if Tom finds out that Daisy killed Myrtle? Nick peers through a window to check on them, but all he sees is Tom and Daisy talking. They look united, almost as if they're conspiring. Nick assures Gatsby that Daisy is fine, but Gatsby stays, just in case. Gatsby returns home at dawn, having waited for nothing. Nick goes to see Gatsby and tells him to leave town for a while, but Gatsby wants to stay until he knows what Daisy wants to do. Meanwhile, George Wilson is on a mission to find the owner of the big yellow car. Deranged with grief and lack of sleep, he'd started walking towards West Egg just after dawn. At some point on his journey, someone gives him Gatsby's name. He reaches Gatsby's house at around 3pm and finds Gatsby in his pool. Sensing trouble, Nick rushes to Gatsby's house after work, but he's too late. He finds Gatsby lying dead on his inflatable pool mattress. George Wilson's body is sprawled in the grass nearby. When no one comes forward to handle Gatsby's affairs, Nick becomes Gatsby's champion. It seems that no one else cares. With radio silence from Daisy and a cowardly refusal from Maya Wolfsheim, Nick is disgusted with everyone. But then, Gatsby's father shows up. Henry C. Gatz left Minnesota as soon as he read about his son's death in the newspaper. Even though Gatsby, or Jimmy, had walked out on his parents many years prior, Henry was still very proud of his son. Once he became successful, Gatsby was generous with his parents. Only one more unexpected person attends Gatsby's funeral, the owl-eyed man from Gatsby's library. Of Gatsby's legions of guests, Owl Eyes is the only one who pays his respects. Soon after this, Nick decides to return home to the Midwest. When he meets Jordan Baker to break things off, she coolly informs him that she's already engaged to someone else. Ouch. A short time later, Nick encounters Tom Buchanan on the street. Nick refuses to shake his hand. He assumes Tom was the one who gave Gatsby's name to George Wilson. Tom admits that he did. But he'd basically done it at gunpoint. Besides, Tom believed Gatsby deserved it for being a liar and for killing Myrtle like a stray dog. It seems that Daisy hasn't admitted to being the driver. What a bunch of rotten, careless snobs. On Nick's last night, he sits on Gatsby's beach, gazing across the bay. He imagines how hopeful Gatsby must have felt when he saw that green light at the end of Daisy's dock. But Gatsby failed to realise that his dream of a life with Daisy belonged to the past. It was over. Perhaps we all have a touch of Gatsby in us, with our relentless pursuit of dreams and bright futures. But to Nick, we're more like boats, beating against a current that pulls us back. Gatsby's beautiful dream crumbled into a delusion and ended as a nightmare. His epic failure might be a lesson for all of us. Then again, maybe we could all just dream big, work hard and avoid rotten crowds like the Buchanans. What do you think? We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.